Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're taking a look at the 1973 Land Rover Range Rover. Now this first generation was produced between 1970 and 1996 and it was only available in this two-door version until 1981. Now this uh, was initially not designed to be a luxury uh, type vehicle as the interior for instance was quite utilitarian, had vinyl seats and a plastic dashboard all of which was designed to uh, be hosed down in case of ever needing to be washed because these were used as like farm vehicles or for you know people going out shooting or using with dogs or anything like that really so it was all designed to be as utilitarian and as basic as possible now it's not as basic as the likes of series 3 which was uh, around the time as this because it had way more exposed metal less uh, you know comfy uh, interiors and uh, way less space in general because this is a larger vehicle and uh, yeah this also has way more boot space than a uh, series 3 ever had as you can see plus it's got that infamous split folding uh, rear tailgate so you can sit on the uh, tailgate there if you ever need to and uh, yeah there were convenience features added over time though such as power steering and aircon but yeah these early versions were really rather quite basic but still far more upmarket than the series 3 ever was and uh, yeah, had a far bigger and far better engine as well. Three and a half litre V8 engine from Rover, who uh, got it from Buick. And uh, yeah, 135 horsepower and 185 pounds feet of torque, which is fairly decent. It was intentionally detuned because, you know, this is more for off roading and uh, getting you to a place rather than getting you anywhere quick. And uh, yeah, also quite hindered by the fact it had carburetors instead of fuel injection, which it eventually got in 1984 which bumped up the power quite significantly to about 155 and uh, yeah you ended up getting slightly larger versions of this engine over time as well was a 3.9 litre and a 4.2 litre both of which also offered more power than this engine did even with fuel injection and uh, yeah this also had uh, coil springs instead of leaf springs permanent four wheel drive and four wheel disc brakes so uh, yeah quite uh, innovative underneath because you know leaf springs were the norm for many many cars even off-roaders like this so uh, to have coil springs meant it was quite also uh, you know comfortable to drive in even when you're going off the off-road stuff so uh, yeah a uh, pretty damn classic car in terms of British cars and uh, one that has lasted all this time because you know the Range Rover is still existing in various different models to this day so uh, yeah, let's get out there nonetheless and see what this car can do. So yeah, this is no Range Rover Sport for instance. It certainly doesn't handle as well as future Range Rovers certainly would. Uh, it's got quite a bit of body roll. And uh, yeah, even though it only weighs 3,800 pounds, which is quite light, f quite light for an SUV, it obviously only has 135 horsepower to deal with. So. Acceleration isn't amazing, but it's fairly decent, certainly more competent than certain other off-roaders at the time. Not to 16, 13.921 seconds, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't do 100 mile an hour, it only does 95. But again, this isn't supposed to be a sporty car, it isn't supposed to be a quick car, it's supposed to be a car that can get you anywhere that you want to go in comfort and reliability. And uh, yeah, this certainly is capable of that was the first vehicle to ever go from North to the South Americas, even through places that didn't even have roads. So uh, yeah, quite a capable off-roader and uh, even though there were obviously reliability issues later on down the line, which is why Toyota in Australia for instance dominated in the uh, 90s, kicking uh, Range Rovers into the dust really. But as far as the car on this game goes, it's easily one of the better off-roaders and uh, yeah, quite a unique one as well. We don't have many uh, Brit British classic off-roaders. Only the uh, Land Rover Series 3 has ever been something that we've had to choose from before. So to finally get this is great as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be one that's going to be a treat to uh, either upgrade or even just race in stock form. Because uh, yeah, I imagine an off-road race win this will be uh, quite fun especially when going up against other cars from the 70s that were SUVs. Though granted, it will be mostly American cars because that's uh, certainly a, a country that has more SUVs from this decade than any other. That's the Ford Bronco and the International Scout. But this is uh, 
yeah, as far as I'm concerned, better than those cars. No, it's not as quick in terms of top speed, but as far as off-road capability and style and uh, usability goes, it's way up there as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, finally glad to have it on the game, quite frankly, because it's been a long time coming. It's been a significant car that's been missing from the Forza series before, so to finally have it is a great thing. And it is a barn find, so you're going to have to go out there and hunt it and hunt for it and you know, play your way through the game, but it's well worth it, trust me. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.